today from Lumen Field in Seattle. It's the NFC Championship game. It's the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. EA Sports coverage of the NFL playoffs brings us to the Pacific Northwest, the home of the 12s, and they are in full roar as you get a look inside Lumen Field in Seattle. Coming up, it's a battle to represent the NFC in this year's Super Bowl. And we've got a classic in store between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Seattle Seahawks. Hello, everyone. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The postseason continuing here on EA Sports. And, man, it is electric in here, and it should be conference championship time. I don't know about you, but my butterflies in my stomach, they have iron wings in this one. <laughs> and every guy I've ever talked to has all said the same thing. This game, the conference championship game, may have more intensity than even the Super Bowl because you know what the stakes are. You're trying so hard to get to the big game that this is the, this is the one that's the real challenge. Always fun to get a peek at Tom Brady as he gets in place to command this offense for Tampa Bay. And we can talk all we want about football being a team game and leaning on different parts and aspects in order to get it done. And that's entirely true during the regular season. Some weeks it's the defense, the special teams running the football. But in the playoffs, all the pressure reverts to the quarterback, and he has to play well and play at a really high level in order for his team to win. Brady now on first down. And his first look is incomplete. Well, this defense, Charles, really played well in that win a week ago. But well, we certainly had a nice conversation with the defensive coordinator, didn't we? And what we heard, I like what we did, but we definitely need more pressure on the quarterback this week. Second and ten. Brady. And a first hookup with his all-pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Well, there it is, partner. Brady to Gronk, their first connection of the game. You think those two often in sync? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any question about it. And look, we know Gronk has a whole lot of fun, but he's deadly serious about his football, as is Tom Brady. Two great competitors, two fantastic players. Brady's throw on target to Godwin here. The ball comes out, but this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. Can almost see inside his face mask there, the look of relief. He coughed it up, but it goes out of bounds. They keep it. Someone carrying around the lucky horseshoe, aren't they? If I were him, I'd go out and play the lottery after that one. A very fortunate man. And they're operating in plus territory here. They're thinking points. Definitely don't want to lose the football at this juncture. Here's second and ten. Brady to throw again. They're targeting Godwin once more, this time complete. Five yards, now it's third and five. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. In this weather, any big play in the passing game, that's, that's just a bonus, right? It certainly is. But oftentimes, offenses think in clement weather, plays to their advantage. Because you know where you're going on offense. Defenders have to react, and they often slip. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. They'll give Ford out another crack. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. 
Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Play number eight here on the opening drive. This is third and goal. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the Bucs have struck first in this NFC title game. Well, these guys have won three straight ball games and another good start to this one out to the 6-0 lead. And I've talked with so many different coaches, as have you, along the way, and they always talk about winning streaks and the mood of a team and how much easier it is to actually prepare during that time. Guys are sharp, guys are focused, everyone's feeling good, and we're seeing it early in this one. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Seahawks and their offense now under veteran head coach Pete Carroll. They'll be led by their ninth-year quarterback out of West Virginia. It's Geno Smith. Now Geno on first down. High throw, but the catch is made. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Here's Smith. This is the tight end fan. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now the first carry for Adrian Peterson. And down to the 44, five yards that time. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. And a good burst there right from the start as he'll get this one out near the 35. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. High throw, but he makes the catch. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 16. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against him a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. First down, here's a run with Peterson. Now he's able to break through one tackle, but it slowed him down enough that he could only manage getting back to the line of scrimmage. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. A give to Peterson out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. Second and goal from the one. They'll run with Dallas. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. D.J. Dallas punching it in from a yard away. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try again. They go to the big man, second time he gets it done. Almost as if they were feeling like he was establishing a rhythm. Give it to him again and again, and how about the end result? Finishes it off in the end zone. Touchdown, great run, and the score. Each team's had it, each team has scored 7-7 here as the kicks away from the six and up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25 the Bucks offense set to begin their next possession after the long touchdown drive we just saw you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offense oh he put it on the carpet a fumble and the Seahawks have picked it up Bring this one back. It's a fumble recovery and a
himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And that makes the score 14 to 7. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. From the six. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. As that ball got away from him, and he saw the opposing team recover it. You felt his pain? Oh, I felt his pain, and you know what was going through his head. Tuck it away. Mm. Take care of the ball. All the things he hears all week in practice, he didn't carry it over into the game. Two seconds to go, first quarter. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. He'll buy some time right. This one complete to his fullback out of the backfield. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. DJ Dallas with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Seahawks are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Now Myers for the extra point. Boy, these may be an adventure this afternoon, but this one is good. A pretty wild first quarter. 21-7, our score. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The spotlight now focuses on the quarterback, and that's Tom Brady. And I don't know what more they need to see of him than what we're going to see in this player montage. He's been great. Why aren't they winning this game, I guess, is the question. It is a good question, isn't it? Remember the time we spent with them in practice beforehand and had that little twinkle in his eye where he thought, hey, we can, we can get some bombs in this game. We can get deep, and that's exactly what's going on. But I don't think he thought if they could do that, that they'd be on the losing end. They might need more of this air raid attack. Meanwhile, Brady's throw pulled in by Gronkowski. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wrap pretty well, but somehow he pulled all his way open and catch the ball. Brady's throw taken in by Evans here. Puts it on the carpet. It's out. And the Seahawks have picked it up. Thank goodness for heaters up here. And thank goodness I don't have to carry the football in this game. It's January. It's cold out there. Trying to clutch the football and absorb the hits. Not easily done. Yeah, we saw a product of the elements right there. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. It's a quick turnaround for them after the turnover, but the way they moved it on their last drive, they're probably eager to get right back at it. And you know me and you know my tendencies in this situation. What do I want right now? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take your shot right here. Yeah, he's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play. Second down. Second and nine. And now Metcalf going to get a chance to run. Play looks familiar because we saw them working on it in practice this week and for a lineman trying to block on this play they love when they get the defense moving in one direction and when they try and change directions it's a lot easier to pick them up and ward them off now they'll try the jet sweep here Able to fight through one tackle. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. On second down now, it's Peterson. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. 
that run is what defenses don't like about dealing with Adrian Peterson. His ability to drop a shoulder and run through contact. And he's amazing at keeping those strong legs going, isn't he? For him, no run is ever truly over. I mean, he's actually not even convinced that when they blow the whistle, he's actually down. That's how he finishes runs in a big way. On second down, Peterson. Showed off the toughness, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. They'll try a little trickery here on the end around. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and the Seahawks are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. Well, partner, if we had their entire playbook in front of us, I'm not sure we would have picked out that play as the one to run in that situation. How about the guts of the offensive coordinator? Dialing that one up and to great success. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. Oh, how about this call down near the goal line? And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. John Ursua taking it in from two yards out. And the Seahawks continue to show why it pays to play at home in the postseason as they add on to their lead. Well, we've talked about it before. You know, this jet sweep, something a lot of teams like to run nowadays, and this one winds up in the end zone. And it is all about creating different ways to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. And wasn't it interesting that prior to this game, the head coach told us, I saw this sitting in my chair watching a Tuesday night college game and decided to implement it myself. Extra point up and through by Myers. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And here we go again with Tom Brady in Tampa's offense. A lot of the problems have been on the other side of the ball. Is that frustrating for a quarterback who's been playing well? It is, but there's no way that the best ones let their teammates know that. They actually take it upon themselves and say, okay, I have to do even more or I need to play better. Maybe even say, I put my defense in a bad spot. That's what true leadership shows you. Yeah, well, he doesn't need to change much personally. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Fournette, a first down carry. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. And a reminder, folks, as we've done all year, we'll send you to Orlando for our EA Sports halftime report coming up shortly. The coach with us, as always, as he will start to look ahead to Super Bowl 56 in L.A. On second and 11 now. Brady. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Here's Brady to throw. That's caught by the big tight end, O.J. Howard. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. Meanwhile, Brady's throw complete here, pulled in by Howard. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Open man is Howard, the tight end. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end and made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's second of the yard. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. They'll come up now on second and a yard. Again, they'll throw with Brady. Looking for Evans, and it's intercepted. Jordan. Here and there, 
but they're already down three scores and still giving the ball away. If they want to get back into this one, they've got to take care of the ball because right now the way they're playing doesn't say a whole lot for their chances. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. A 10th carry now for Peterson. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. They'll fake it. Now Smith. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Now Smith. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. I think it's pretty safe to say that when you're up three touchdowns, the last thing you want to do is hang one up there and put it in jeopardy and possibly get it intercepted. You get a nice lead. You shouldn't be able to protect it. But if you get careless with the football, look out. And they're going to take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say, we'll see what happens. So on is Jason Myers. He's hit from as long as 58 in his career. And they say officially it's a 68-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. He's going to take a shot at the end zone. Why not? Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. So we've reached halftime here in the NFC Championship as we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports Halftime Report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks. As always, what half remains in the battle to see who will take home that George Allis Trophy and represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. We'll get back to you guys in just a moment. But first, time to look ahead to the AFC Championship coming up later today. And it should be a great one as well, as it'll be the Kansas City Chiefs squaring off against the Tennessee Titans. So with that, let's get you right back out for the second half, as one of these teams will represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. To find out who, let's turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Hallis Trophy still hangs in the balance as the second half now underway in the NFC Championship game. He will return this from deep in the end zone. And they're going to start in a hole as he's brought down at the 11th. The Bucks ready to go here to begin the third quarter. And they have made this look easy. I mean, there's not supposed to be anything easy about the NFL playoffs, but this lead, yes, they're at home, but this has been impressive. And we hear all the time when upsets happen, teams go on the road, that maybe home field advantages and all it's cracked up to be. But you and I both know the reality is teams really fight hard to get it. Why? You don't ever have to change routine. Everything's familiar going into the game. It makes things easier, and that has paid off for them in a big way in this contest. On second and seven, Smith. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. Throwing on third down, Smith. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 
And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. The Smiths throw into the hands of Lockett. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Throwing again is Smith. Drops it underneath for Collins. So the completion good for just three. And that's going to bring up a third down. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Our eyes and attention are on the fullback. Big time carry, big yardage. But how about the guys up front, the offensive line? A lot of people think they may have to block it differently for the fullback to get big yardage. They really don't. Because he's big, strong, and powerful, a lot of times he makes his own way. They may not have to block as hard. First down, they'll run with Hunt. Fights off the tackle at the 20. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. A well, lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, Smith. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Noah Fant there to make the grab. And the Seahawks take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Well, something about this team, you just felt like they were one of destiny all season long, and they made themselves today, as you can see, the class of the NFC. Yeah, and it's starting to look more and more like a Super Bowl trip is very much in their future. And the fans starting to book those tickets. Myers connects on the PAT, and that'll increase their lead to 28. Is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime, they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere, and so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. Seven yards, the pick up there. Fakes the give to Fournette. Now Brady. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. I love that play because in the snow you think run, run, run. Big passing play there. And defenders hate it, especially in open space, because trying to come under control, break down and make a tackle in the open field, difficult normal conditions. In these conditions, 
almost impossible. No gain there on the completion. A shotgun give to Fournette. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Throwing is Brady on third down. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. That's Yannick Ngakwe with a sack. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big, and now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Yeah, that whole, they just can't get out of their own way right now. It's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. Here's Bradley Pinion now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. He gets it away. It's a high hanger. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And out now come the Seahawks. Now their passing game has certainly been buoyed by some unbelievable catches. I love that word because if you're the quarterback, if you're the guy throwing it, buoyed would be the word, wouldn't it? Because right now, I think his confidence level is so high. I just throw it out there. They will go get it. And we're seeing some fantastic catches and some great plays as a result. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end of the half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game, and with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Off of play action, here's Smith. On the move to his left. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll try the air now with Smith. He's got this one complete to John Ursua. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Carter, I have to tell you, just one word keeps coming to mind from watching them this afternoon, and that's impressive. They have been impressive from the opening kickoff, and they haven't let up here even into the fourth quarter. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. A throw over the middle taken in, and he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Now a first down throw, it's Smith. Over the middle, that's caught by Metcalf. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. First and 10, Smith. They'll lock it with the grab over the middle. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And just a yard to go here on second down. They'll run here with Dallas. And he's able to work it here to the eight yard line.
Gino down to throw. Down at the two. Broke through the first contact, but ultimately stopped short of the goal line. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And he'll get it down close to the goal line, but not quite in. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. Well, now they'll try the end around. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. DK Metcalf taking it in from a yard out. And the Seahawks are closing in on a Super Bowl berth now as they extend their fourth quarter lead. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. They are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The attention shifting back to Chris Godwin and the rest of the Tampa offense. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the office. And I love the accumulation, the catches, the yardage. That means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out in a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. To throw again on second down, Brady. And a catch right side by Evans. Oh, he's hit. He lost the football. Put it on the carpet. And the Seahawks have recovered. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down Same. down this big in the yeah, fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd say an afternoon to forget. Absolutely. Now the ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense. And they have to be feeling pretty good. Comfortable fourth quarter lead as they take over following the fumble recovery. Following the fumble recovery, Smith. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take and look like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Now Gino to the goal line, but it's incomplete. And the incompletion there stops the clock. Any surprise they're throwing here late? Ordinarily, yes, because you would think enough is enough. They've got plenty of lead, but I've seen this a bunch of times as well. The defense can crowd the line of scrimmage. If you just hand it off inside, you're getting your running back popped a lot as well. Sometimes the defense dictates it. If they're going to crowd it, you may have no other choice but to throw it downfield. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. This defense bending but not breaking. It's a gain of three. It's now fourth and goal. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. Myers' kick is good. And they're well on their way now as the lead grows even larger. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points. But this widens it out, as you said. And now it's all about ball control, isn't it? And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Easy environment and certainly just not looking good here in the fourth. 
On first and ten, here's Brady. Over the middle, complete. That's Evans. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column, but as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. We're going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably is aging. And the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. Carlos Dunlap just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. Jordan Brooks in there to drop him at sacks on first and second downs. Now leads to a third and long. Well, remember, he had the interception earlier. Now he adds the sack. He's really making his presence felt out there. Well, he is putting together a heck of a game. In fact, he's going to bump these plays to his highlight reel. Okay, so what he was going for Evans, but that pass is intercepted. Picked off by the veteran Richard Sherman. And the Seahawks are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. CD, this defense, I mean, at this rate, they're just having fun out there right now. And normally with this type of a lead, if you're a starter on defense, you're saying, hey, let the other guys play. But with this going on, no one wants to come out of the game. They all want their shot at picking off a pass. And they'll indeed take a knee. And what a ride it has been. NFC champs, they have punched their ticket to the biggest show in sports. And what a way to get there, to go the entire season and then play for the right to go to the Super Bowl and the right to call themselves NFC champs. Elation has to abound. And that'll close the books on the conference championship. For Charles Davis, myself, Brandon Gordon, and our entire crew, we'll talk to you in two weeks from the Super Bowl.